Hi guys, welcome back. We're diving into our big project and in our um, art class this week with this two day project. So I'm just giving you a little tutorial here to show you how um, this is done. I considered having you guys zoom into my in-person lesson, but I figured the quality of the camera on the Chromebooks isn't good enough for this. Um, with this, you're able to go back and rewatch if you're confused, which this tends to be your most challenging project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll with this. So the things we're trying to learn here is we're learning about symmetry, we're learning about reflection, mirror images, and design. So there's kind of a math connection with this, but I promise you it's not as boring as it sounds. So first thing you're gonna do with this paper, and all your papers are gonna be different. Um, everybody's is gonna look different. Everybody's is gonna be different lengths. I'm just gonna show you a basic way to find the middle of your paper, okay? It's important that we find the relative middle of our paper so that we can build our design outward. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure, my paper's a rectangle, yours might be a square, uh, might be a rectangle as well. Mine is a pretty good size rectangle. So I have two sides that are the same, I got two more sides that are the same. So we're gonna start with one side, we're gonna measure. One important thing I want you to know is when you're measuring something, you do not start at the end of the ruler, you start at the first little tick mark, sometimes there's a zero. Okay, mine there's not a zero, it's just a tick mark. So you're going to the inch side of your ruler and you're not doing this. You are lining up the first tick mark. Okay, my ruler's not quite long enough. Here's 12 inches. I'm gonna line it up again at the tick mark, not at the end of the ruler, at the tick mark. So it's about 18 inches, okay? So if this side's 18 inches, our job is to find what the midway is. So we're gonna find half of 18 inches, okay? Half of 18 inches is nine. So start at the tip mark, make a little tick mark at the nine because nine is half of 18. Go to the top of our page, start at the tip mark. This is 18 as well because this is a rectangle which means this side is the same as this side, this side is the same as this side. So this is 18 inches as well Half of 18 is nine. We're gonna make a tick mark at the nine. Grab our ruler, join the two tick marks, lightly join the two. If you draw too hard, it's gonna to be tough to erase. And this is meant to be erased. This is just a guiding point for us. Okay, all right, next step, going to the other side. Starting at the tick mark. Not at the edge of the ruler, that's inaccurate. Start at the tick mark. And our ruler goes to about 12, roughly. Half of 12 is six. Make a tick mark at six. Other side, same length as the other one, about 12 inches, roughly. Starting at the tick mark. Half of 12 is six. Making a tick mark at six. When you're finding the midway of something, you're always gonna divide um, your full length in half. So you're finding halfway into the paper, you're gonna measure the full length of the paper, divide it in half, that's how you find the midway of it, halfway through, okay? Ruler isn't long enough, so I'm just gonna try my best, lightly, not that light. Connect my points. Okay, do my best here. If you try hard in my class, and you do a nice and neat job, you're gonna get a good grade. That's all I use for grading, is on the basis of neatness and effort. So try hard, do a nice neat job, you're gonna get a good grade. Okay, now that I found my middle, it's time to talk about our letters, okay? I went online to the Google search for different fonts. Um, I'm using three letters because I'm using my initials, which is what you guys are gonna do. Most of you have three initials. You have a first name, middle name, last name, so you have a first letter of your first name. My first name is Brooke, so I have a B. My middle name is Joe, so I have a J. And my last name is Bennett, so I have another B, okay? You guys are gonna do something similar. You're gonna think about your three, if you have two middle names, two last names, you're gonna have four to five 
um, letters, but most of you will have three. So you're gonna think of your three initials. Most of you know what those are. And you're going to look up interesting fonts on Google Images. You're going to view those images, find one you like, draft your letters onto a piece of paper and cut them out. Uh, it works really good if you have poster board or the side of a cereal box, something that is a little bit more firm, that makes something great to trace around. I have that for this. For these, I had to use tracing paper, which is similar to parchment paper. Some of you might have that in your kitchen. Okay, so your job essentially is to find your initial letters. You're going to get some inspiration from Google Images, uh, find an interesting font. This is kind of a graffiti-like font that I liked. This is kind of a calligraphy-like font that I liked. And this is just one I sort of made up. You're gonna design your letters on a piece of paper, piece of cardboard, depends on what you have at your house, okay? Once you have your letters, you're gonna cut them out with a pair of scissors. You got three letters, okay, you got it. I'm gonna choose my favorite letter. This one's my favorite, okay? I'm gonna start my design. We're gonna start in the middle. That's why we found the middle. We're not starting out here, we'll get there, but we're, we're gonna start in here. I've got my paper split into quadrants, okay? There's four parts, that's why they call them quadrants. Quad meets four. So, I'm gonna stick your letter in any quadrant you want. I'm gonna stick mine here. I'm gonna trace around that guy best I can. Might help you to get a piece of tape. Some of my students have been doing that this week. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll outline this with a much thicker um, form of media at a later time. First, we're just drafting our design. This design is meant to be abstracted. If you can't really tell what the letters are, you can't tell where the letters are, which letters which, doesn't matter. This is meant to be a design. This is meant to have symmetry. It is meant to be abstract and I will post some examples of some good um, of some good projects with symmetry and with um, these initial letters. I will post some of those tomorrow so you guys can see those and view those for inspiration. So now to the tough point, this is the hardest part, but you guys are gonna get it because you're smart. So we're gonna make a reflection. A reflection is just like a mirror image. In mathematics, this is a thing. Um, you guys probably haven't done that yet because you're a little bit young for that. So in order to have perfect symmetry, we have to reflect our image across the quadrants. So we're going to start here like we did, traced it, place our stencil back on that tracing, put a finger down, hold it in place, flip that guy over. If it passes the test, it's like this. You can cut that guy in half just like a butterfly, okay? Symmetry, a good example of nature, is a butterfly. A butterfly can be cut in half. It's the same on both sides, okay? This is just like a butterfly. You gotta make sure it's the same on both sides, okay? This one's here. That one's in the same spot on this side. This is here. That's in the same spot on this side. This is here. That's in the same spot on this side. This one's in the same spot. This one's in the same spot, okay? So... We did our reflection correctly. We're gonna do that one more time so you guys can see. Place your, first you're gonna, you're gonna place your letter anywhere at first, trace around it. Then, once you get to the second sort of tracing is when you're gonna do the reflection. Put a finger on that guy, flip it over the line, okay? Put a finger on it, flip it over the line. Same on both sides. If we cut it in half, just like a butterfly, Trace around that guy as best as I can. Don't forget the middle parts if you have a letter like this. All right, halfway done. I'm gonna flip this paper for you guys just so you can view this in a way that you understand best. You're not gonna need to flip your paper um, when you do yours, okay? So same thing on this side. I'm gonna reflect this image over the line, okay? Place my letter where I traced it. Put a finger on it to hold in place. Flip that guy over, okay? Boom, 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 boom. 
okay? Everything's in the same spot. Cut it right in half. It's the same on both sides. Passes the test. Trace around it. One more time. Got that guy here. Flip it over. Okay. I made sure. I'm gonna flip this again, only so you guys can see. You will not need to worry about flipping your paper when you do this on your own. Okay, placing the stencil where we traced it. Put a finger down. Flip that guy over the line. Place it where it belongs. Put your finger down. Flip that guy over the line. Trace, trace around it. All right. We've got the first part of our design. Cut it in half. Same on both sides, okay? Cut it in half, same on both sides. We've got symmetry, we've got a good start to our design, okay? What you're gonna do after this is you're gonna move on to your other two letters. So you're gonna pick your second favorite one. I'm gonna pick the J. I'm gonna place the J somewhere around my design that I just made. I'm not placing it all the way out here yet, okay? We're gonna get there. I'm gonna place it kind of in here because this looks like an interesting design. You wanna be viewing this, not so much about the letters, you wanna be viewing this as a design and what looks good to you, what looks interesting, what looks out there to you. So this looks out there to me. I'm gonna go ahead, I realize I'm not putting this J in a quadrant, I'm putting it between two quadrants, but I'm just, I'm gonna show you how to make that work. Okay, a little bit harder, don't really have as thick of a material to trace around, but you know what, it still works. Doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Biggest thing I care about is you guys understand symmetry and reflection, and you can prove that to me with your project. Okay, we've got our J. With this one, we're gonna flip it right over, okay? Put my finger on the J, flip that guy right over. Okay, this is a little bit harder for people to understand. So if you look at mine, the little tips of the J's are both on this end, okay? The ends of the J's here are on this end. These little guys are over here, okay? If you cut this in half, we got every part of the J in the same spot on both sides, okay? We got this here, this here, this is here, this is here, this little guy's here, this little guy's here, okay? I'll flip that over one more time so you can understand. Put your finger, and you're gonna flip that guy over. Trace around it. So you guys are gonna be busy today when you do this. You gotta research your um, letters, your fonts, you've got to design an interesting letter, you've got to design another interesting letter, and then you've got to design a third interesting letter. So there'll be three interesting letters that you are, I shouldn't say interesting, there'll be three letters that are your initials that you are going to research and design. Then you will be cutting the letters out, then you will be going through this process of reflection to make a symmetrical design. Okay, I've got these two over here. Okay, each letter needs to be reflected four times. That's why we broke our paper into four quadrants. So I'm going to have four of each letter, okay? We're gonna start this J up here because we gotta, we don't really have a good way to go about this right now. So we're gonna, we reflected this here. We're gonna go up here, place it in a spot that makes sense. Trace around it. 
It doesn't need to be perfect. You're doing this in pencil, which you're always working in pencil so you can erase. Okay, line it up where it belongs. Flip that guy over. Okay, gonna move it out. This intersects with this B here. I want this to do the same thing right here. Okay, it's a little bit to the top. Got it about right there. Cut it in half. This side here, this side is also on this side. This side here, this is also on this side. This here, this is also on this side. This is a good reflection. These two letters have symmetry. This is a symmetrical design where we have mirrored our letter across the quadrant. Okay, so I got my first name. I got my middle name. Now I'm going to do my last name, okay? I'm going to place this B here. Seems interesting to me. Can make it this way, maybe this way. Anyway, okay? I'm going to place it this way. I would love if you would overlap your letters. It creates a more intricate design, okay? Don't worry about overlapping anything. Don't worry about your letters falling off the page if they're really big. All this is okay. Your design should be unique. They should be interesting. The thing that I want to see is that they reflect symmetry, okay? I want this to be a symmetrical, interesting design. That is what we're going for here. All right, got that one. Gonna reflect this over the line here, okay? Line it up where it belongs. Put my eraser on it. Put my eraser on it. Boom, flip that guy over. Okay. Piece of tape could help if you gotta cut your stencils. These letters are what you would consider stencils. We're drawing around them, okay. All right, does it pass the test? Same on both sides, okay? Couple more, okay? I got this here in the right spot. Pencil eraser worked good last time. We're gonna flip that guy over. You wanna make sure it's interacting with this J the same way it's interacting with this J, this is where people get confused. So the top of this B is on top of the J, the top of this B should be on top of this J. Okay, about here. You're always flipping the letter over the line, okay? You're flipping it all the way over. You're not just taking it and moving it over, you're flipping it over. This can get a little confusing, but you guys can do it because you're intelligent. Okay, so we're not just going bloop, okay? We are flipping it over. And to pass the test to make sure it's symmetrical and it's a good reflection, you can flip it, boom, flipped it, and you can flip it, boom. You can flip it, and you can flip it. See how that works? Okay, now we're gonna reflect this one more time. Line it up in the right spot, hold it down, flip that guy over.
All right, and then you have your complete design. So at this point, you're gonna erase your guidelines in the middle. Okay, these guidelines were simply there to help us find the middle, help us build our design from the inside out. Fill in our stuff where it's lost. Okay. Fix it a little. All right. Then, preferably you would take an oil pastel. I know a lot of you do not have oil pastels at home. I'm sure a lot of you have crayons though. Crayons and oil pastels are in the same family. They're a waxy, water resistant material. We're going to be using a certain media tomorrow that, um, is water-based. So for this outline, we need a water-resistant material, okay? Crayons, oil pastels are water-resistant. If you don't have those things, reach out to me, reach out to a neighbor, uh, a buddy, something like that, okay? If you, if you absolutely cannot get a crayon or a oil pastel, outline these in something that you do have, okay? Colored pencil, marker, but this is the key to a successful project, just so you know, okay? Let me know if you don't have the right resources, we'll figure it out, um, you know, do your best you can, but to be successful with this project, for this project to work, you need a water resistant media, okay? Oil pastel or crayon, which most of you have, okay? We need three different oil pastels or crayons, okay? So, why do we need three? Well, kids, because we have three letters and each letter is a family. And so each letter is going to be outlined in the same color. I'm going to choose green for my first B and I am going to nice and neat, carefully outline. Now you gotta be careful, you don't wanna rub your hand through this because boom, look what happens when you rub your hand. Okay, gets all over. Crayons might not run into that problem. Okay, I'm outlining my Last B, remember that each letter is repeated four times in your project, okay? So I have one, two, three, four of this type of B. I've got one, two, three, four of this J, okay? This is my middle name initial. I'm gonna outline all of my J's in one color, all of my B's in one color, and all of my other bees in one color, okay? I have a bee for my first name and a bee for my last name, which is why I have so many bees, okay? Most of you might not run into that issue, but that's why I did these style bees and these style bees, because these represent my first initial, these represent my last initial, these represent my middle initial. Okay, so we're using three colors. You got a first name, middle name, last name, first initial, middle initial, last initial. That's three colors. You're using one color per letter group. I use green for these Bs. I used a different color for these Js. And I'm using a third and last color for the other Bs. Okay. If you got two middle names, you're going to be using four different letters, you're going to have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You're going to have 13, 14, 15, 16 if you were going to use four, but we won't dive into all that complicated stuff. If you got a question, you got some kind of unique situation, let me know. I can clear up any questions for you. There's no use going into that right now. 
being careful really thickly really applying a lot of pressure as I outline these letters and you can see why I wasn't worried about outlining these perfectly you can see why I just kind of sketched them in and wasn't too worried about being messy is because when you cover them up with the oil pastel it looks great no matter what it's such a thick medium okay this is where you're going to stop for today so quick review you're going to find three letters you like on the internet then you're going to look at those letters and you're going to sketch letters that you like okay they can be inspired by the images and the fonts that you find on the internet, Google image search, or honestly, you can make up the letters yourself and design them your own way. Then you're going to cut them out of the cardboard or the paper, or whatever you have available. You're going to create three stencils for yourself. Okay, first name, middle name, last name. Then you're going to practice reflecting your letters. You're going to place your favorite letter in one of the quadrants, one, two, three, four. Okay, you're going to flip it, reflect it over. You're going to go in a clockwise motion, flip it, reflect it over, flip it, reflect it over. There's going to be four of that first letter. You're going to go to your second letter or your second initial. Put it in a quadrant or between two quadrants is what I did here. Okay, you're going to flip it, reflect it over. Okay, then you're going to flip it, reflect it over. Flip it, reflect it over. Last initial, last name. Line it up in a quadrant. One, two, three, four quadrants. It's in one. Flip it, reflect it over. Okay. Flip it, reflect it over. Flip it, reflect it over. That's how you do a reflection. That is how you create a design with perfect symmetry. And then lastly, we're going to use three colors in crayon or oil pastel or whatever you can find. And we are going to outline our letters. So my first initial is one color okay there's four of them but they're all one color my second initial is another color there's four of them but they're all one color my third initial is another color there's four of them but they're all one color each initial is a family brooke is a family joe is a family bennett is a family and those families have a color okay so you're only going to be using three colors three letters first name, middle name, last name, working on your reflections and symmetry. Please email me with any questions you have. Please email me instead of comment to me in Google Classroom. It's harder for me to access your question. If you just email me, it's easy for me to see, easy for me to email you back. Okay, I hope you guys have fun with this. Um, I hope you get to this point and we'll start on the next part tomorrow, finish our project and our class up. Have a good night, you guys.